a fish with a translucent head, shrimp that create their own armor, and a killer sponge that looks like a ping pong ball. This list is full of creatures that look like they could be from another planet, but they find their home right here on Earth in the Mariana Trench. Let's dive right into the dark icy waters and discuss the top 10 creatures from another planet discovered in the Mariana Trench. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jellies move through the water like boat oars. And while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. These tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say that these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on. In our number nine spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet? Like something you'd want as like a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge will slowly consume its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me, personally. In our number eight spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the angler fish, these guys have a lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from the inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and kinda talented. In our number 7 spot today, we have the zombie worm. These worms were first discovered in 2002, where they were living in the bones of the carcass of a dead whale, nearly 10,000 feet or 3,000 thousand meters deep in the ocean. The reason these guys have the common name zombie worm is because of the fact that their main food source is those same bones that they were first found living in. These guys love to eat bones, but in their own special way because of the fact that they don't have mouths or stomachs. Instead, they secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves the bones, which frees up the fat and proteins that are trapped inside. The worms then have their symbiotic bacteria that lives inside of them digest the fat and the protein. Here's the thing though, we actually don't know how the nutrients from the bacteria get to the worm. They either digest the bacteria somehow, or there is some sort of process where the nutrients get transferred. While when they were first found, they were chowing down on whale bones, zombie worms are happy to eat any kind of bones that they can come across, and they've actually been observed making a meal out of non-aquatic animal bones that somehow ended up in the deep sea. In our number 6 spot today, we have the barrel eye. This guy is one weird looking fish, man. The barrel eye fish is also known as the spook fish, and they of course get their names due to their appearance. These fish are relatively small and they are best known for their extremely unusual transparent fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered, there were so many questions surrounding them. At first, scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after some further research, it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate both up and forward. The fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in the depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2,000 to 2,000 
12,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time, with its first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photograph of a live one was ever captured for the world to see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench anytime soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number 5 spot today we have the ghost fish. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along, minding his own business, has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. In our number 4 spot today we have the aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found not only in the Mariana Trench, but also in the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys' habitats make their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question, how did these guys find metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater? Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar-based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the sea floor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for, like protecting our upset stomach from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shells and acts as a type of of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know guys, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 3 spot today we have basket stars. Basket stars are like the Mariana Trench cousin of the starfish and when you see them you can totally understand why. These guys have this same main kind of disc that you see on a starfish, but rather than five stiff arms, these guys have five long, slender, flexible arms that all branch out from themselves repeatedly to form even more little tiny arms, with the last branch usually ending up curled. There is no real rhyme or reason for the shapes of basket stars, as it just depends on how they grow. So while some look beautiful and almost like a webbing of lace, there are some that look absolutely chaotic. You know what they say? No two basket stars are the same. I don't think anyone has ever said that, but we're gonna start. Basket stars are able to navigate around the seafloor by wiggling their arms around, and they also have the ability to curl into a ball when they're feeling threatened by predators. They also do eat, as they have a mouth located on the underside of their disc, and they prefer to eat things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. In our number two spot today, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents because these giant tube worms live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria we talked about to live inside of them for their food, like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever, because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component in the exoskeleton of crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. One more quickly, but I swear, it's the last one. These tube worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay, 
Now I'm actually done. In our number one spot today, we have the predatory tuna kit, one of my favorite creatures to ever exist. They're so weird. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and seafloor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of their prey, their mouths will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles and they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right. And it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird, but one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world, and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.